Are you busy with your work and studying, but always quantify an optimal way to learn Mandarin Chinese? This video is for you. 大家好，如果你忙于工作或学习，但总是想找到学习中文的最佳方法，这个视频适合您。Hello everyone, it's Momo here. I'm currently working full time as a partnership development manager as a marketing technology company. Because of my work, I'm not only working eight hours a day, but also travel quite often for business trip. Even though I have a very busy schedule, I always want to find optimal way and try different approaches to leverage my Chinese. 我现在是一位伙伴关系发展经理，因为是工作要求，我不仅每天。做八小时，还经常出差。但我就是坚持中文，我想提高我的中文的水平。So in this video, I want to provide insight into my Chinese learning journey. I will walk you through how to nurture your motivation, have your strategic prioritization, and specific structure that I follow to improve my vocabulary, grammar, speaking, and listening skills. Additionally, I will share some amazing resources and some approaches to keep track of your learning. Okay, woman, 开始吧 My goal this year is to reach SSK five. I think it is important to set some goal so you know what direction you want to follow. For me, ultimately, I want to achieve intermediate to advanced level in my communication ability in Chinese. My motivation was primarily driven by my passion for Chinese culture. And desire to connect with locals people during my traveling. I have traveled to some country or some part that speaking Chinese, like in Taiwan or in Penang, Malaysia. And my goal is to travel to Singapore probably end of this year, and then travel to China because I have so many places in my wish list to travel to China next year. I suggest that you should do the same. Just give some bullet point of why you want to learn Mandarin Chinese. Stick it on the wall or put it in your journal. Every time, whenever you need to push yourself or gain some motivation, just have a look at it. I would say through my lifelong learning language journey, having consistency and continuous striving is very important. The next thing I have found is that. Strategic prioritization is crucial to have an efficient progress. For me, with Chinese, I want to leverage my communicative competencies and digital literacy. With that, I mean that I want to able to speak with Chinese speaker fluently, listen to all my favorite Chinese postcard, watching the show. And reading Chinese news and articles, so that's why there is one thing that I do prioritize, which is writing by hand. I instead focus on understanding the meaning of the characters and the ability to recognize this. I divided my time into four main focus, which including vocabulary, grammar, speaking practice, and listening comprehension. Firstly, to strengthen my vocabulary and grammar, I have developed a structured routine. Each day, I challenge myself to learn 10 to 15 vocabularies with two super Chinese and super tests. I think this is very useful and handy for me because I have to travel very often, and it also follow. The structure of SSK, which I have mentioned before, that is very important to find the suitable resources that follow this structure. So how I break down these resources with Super Chinese and Super Test, I learned almost every day, 10 to 15 words. Not only learning the word purely, but I also learned the vocabulary, its meaning, and also the sample sentences that associate this with the words. Understand. Or think up when I will use the words to see whether it's suitable with business, hobby, my daily routine, or whatever. Or maybe I will listen to it in the future. I think it's important to see the connection because it helped me to reconnect these words with my memory and easily remember them. Another important thing is I think how to continuously recall, review these words. Okay, so what I did. Is I regularly、uh, do SSI quiz and test to see how much I have remembers these words and I able to record it when I need it. With Super Chinese, I aim to finish one lesson every three days, which including vocabularies, grammars, dialogues, or conversation, and also the SSI. 
This ways of learning allow me to stay consistent without feeling overwhelmed. As I have finished all the Super Chinese in my app, now I focus on using Super Test to learn 10 to 15 words for comprehensible input and listening. I have exposed myself to a variety of listening material. I think what is very important is that to find suitable material with your current level and then gradually increase to higher level. Tiny Voss is always in my list of listening. It have all the listening level from beginner to advanced level. Was it very natural to listen to? And also to entertain myself, I watched a lot of Chinese shows. Unlike other people who like watching movies, I mean, movie is so so, but I'm not really into it. I like singing. That's why my source of list of material have a lot of show that including like Sing My Song, The Voice of China, Youth With You, Sister Who Made Waves. I watch almost all the season of this, this show. And it is very natural to catch up and understand what they are saying. Let's say when the churches, they give the compliment to the contestants or, you know, when they are chit chat to each other. I found it's very naturally learning from this material. For movies or the Netflix shows, I couldn't recommend enough the show Flavorful Origin. You are the evil of my eyes. Our times, nothing of 30 is that I'm still watching right now. Actually re-watching right now. Oh, another thing that um, I don't know if you like sing carol case. Me is another example of like having the lyrics and then you sing along with that. I think it's very good to not only to listen to the song but also recognize all the characters, all the words that having in the song. So improving my speaking skill is one of my priorities. For this specific to leverage this skill, I have invested adequate amount of time and try different approaches. The first thing that I do is Super Chinese apps. So for this app, you can choose other students to speaking with and it's all free. So either you can talk to other students for a specific topic or you can guessing the word with them. It is free, it's convenient. Another disadvantage is that because everyone can try it. So sometimes there's some student the language level is quite beginning and they don't know what to speak or only speak a simple words. But I think it's a good way to start with. The second thing that I do to leverage my speaking skill is using Tandem app. This app is built for practicing languages. So in this app, you can find other students who want to practicing English in exchange for Chinese or offer other exchange languages in their local language. I particularly like this app because it's allowed me to match with other students all over the world who have the same interest of practicing languages. Just one tip to find the right people to practicing with is that reading their review or reading their profile before start learning with them. And of course, if you have extra budget, you can use the app like italki to book one-on-one -on -one class or speaking with native speaker. And just another tip that helped me a lot, and not only with Chinese, but other languages, is I try to debate with myself. So it's just another simple idea is that, let's say if you have learned the topic today, is that should we always tell the truth, right? So with this topic, there will two ideas, the two way of thinking. We should upvote for it or we should downvote for it. And then I'm just debate with myself on like why we should do that and why we shouldn't do that. It really helped me because I can deep dive into different opinions using all of my resources to prove the idea. So I think it's really helpful to deep dive in my language capabilities and protect my opinions. And then the ideas that come naturally to me. Essentially, I found that practicing speaking skills or grow your speaking skills is mainly impressed on all the mistakes I remember when I started speaking Chinese, all I can say is that very simple words like saying hello uh, and sharing some words about who I am. Then over the time, I can share more complex topics. You will build your confidence and your capability along the way. Staying organized is essential for my language learning progress because as a person naturally, I feel motivated to see how I have progressed over time. And for this matter, how I see my progress is through the app. Let's say, you know, with Chinese app, or let's say if you learn with the textbook, you will see how much you have finished over the course. And then 
the next step I do is that taking the test and taking exercise. I do is like monthly and quarterly. Let's say with uh, speaking skill, I recording myself. With writing ability, I also try to write more complex sentences and see how I can use all the language vocabularies or resources that I have learned and put in like writing. And then with listening skills, I try to upgrade my listening material and listening ability by different level. And at the same time, I use the tool like Google Calendar to keep track and book the blog in my calendar to learn. So in my calendar, you will see that in the morning, that should be the time after I finish all my personal stuff, I will focus on learning Chinese and I keep it very consistently in my calendar. To be honest, I'm not the one who meticulously keep track my learning, but I make sure that I have a adequate portion for my learning. So 35% of my learning will invest on learning through the courses, through the app, through Super Chinese apps and Super Test. And then another 35% of my time, I will invest in learning alternative resources through postcards, to watch a movie, to watch different shows, reading articles, listen to music, etc. And then another 30% is actively using the language, like talking with other people, taking the test, taking exercise. So all of the things that I'm doing, it's not only keep me focused and keep me structurized with learning, but at the same time, I feel very motivated and I see my progress to continue leverage myself in my language learning journey. That's it for my Chinese progress update to date. I hope that you find some useful insight that you can apply immediately to your Chinese language learning routine. The key is to stay consistent and enjoy the process. If you have any question or any suggestion, don't forget to comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in the next video and bye bye.